an opening statement from Coach Silverfield and then begin with a Obviously, another disappointing loss, uh, and it comes down to lack of execution in all three phases this time. Uh, offensively, uh, I'm sure they were capable of putting up some yardage, but uh, not only with football. Three turnovers in a game. Um, like I said, that seems to be the sentiment. And we have the last three games now, uh, we're looking at seven turnovers, and it's hard to compete against anybody, especially where we're at right now, uh, turning the ball three times in the game, you know, special teams. We have to figure out our, our kicking situation as far as field goals and extra points. Uh, Got to continue to look at that and figure out who's going to give us the best chance where we can even make extra points. And then defensively, um, just too many big plays, right? That was the story of the night, you know, put together some decent stops and played soundly for the most part. But then all of a sudden, you know, whether it's the drive right before halftime or the, you know, the, Missed tackles, allowing for big runs uh, and some big pass plays as well. So it, we've got a lot of things we got to get fixed. Uh, it's a short week. And one thing I know, at least, uh, and there are no excuses, there are no explanations. Um, as I just got done saying on the radio, that this 2021 Tiger football team, I'm not sure how it will be defined by our record. I, I do know that they care. I do know that they fight. They haven't given up. But the narrative's got to change. We have to fade in a way to execute enough well enough to win a game. Frank and Terry. Yeah, Ryan, I wanted to ask, I know one of the things um, about the defense coming into this game was that they needed to get off the field. Well, if you look at Tulsa's time of possession, it was knocked down. But how do you get the defense to, to play in a complete game in the sense of where they're getting off the field but not allowing those big plays? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, we talked about whenever time you, you line up and you say, okay, when are things executed, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, and it's it's being able to, to maintain that for an entire game. And, Frank, that's the question we're continuing to look at, right? Because if we're able to go out there and, and trust the game plan and get those stops, no differently than trust the offensive game plan and, and get those yards and, and maintain first downs and not have to punt, you feel like the game plan's there. But then when you, all of a sudden, whether it's a turnover as an offense or defensively giving up the explosive play, um, obviously clearly missed tackles on some, uh, not being in the right spot, uh, on certain plays uh, for the big pass plays. So we, we've got to figure it out. Um, we're going to look long and hard into it. Obviously, this week's a different type of game plan on a short week versus Navy. Uh, but, Frank, it's um, it, that it's bothersome because we can't give up the explosive plays. Um, yeah, the, the three and outs and the stops are great. And you, you look at it, it's, I'm not much of a stat guy. You look at the stats just that alone, and you'd say, wow, heck of a game for Memphis. But, you know, the, the explosives uh, continue to be – our Achilles heel on defense. And then offensively, um, in that first half, uh, the offense put together some some really good drives, but you know, a few of those, you know, were, were empty trips in the red zone or, or or what what was going on at the end of those drives that kind of caused the offense to stall a little bit? Yeah, you know, I mean, anytime you get in that what I call the red zone or the tight zone, Frank, we just, you know, we practice it, we got to execute better. Obviously, the field shrinks and gets condensed. Um, we missed a few passes. They were blitzing a little bit more, and we weren't able to maintain the run game down there. Um, in the tight zone, we got to continue. That's one of those areas that we've made a focus that we need to improve upon. And then, obviously, coming away empty-handed with you know uh, two missed field goals, and then the, obviously the missed extra point. Hey, coach. Um, uh, There's another tough loss. What do you say to your team to get them back on track the way they can play to their potential? Yeah, I, I, I addressed them in the locker room and I said, you know, again, I don't, um, no one wants to hear this narrative again. I'm, I'm proud of their effort. I'm proud of their fight, but we've got to execute better. And I said, that, you know, it always starts with me, um, but we know that we've got to find ways to, I mean, and look, Terry, we, we talk about the keys to victory in every game that we've, these games that we've played have been owning the football. We haven't been able to do that and until we don't turn the football over. It doesn't matter what we do. And then obviously the, the kicking game and then defensively, you know, the explosive play. So um, I know these guys, look, I, I don't think our guys laid it down and said, we're going to quit. We're not going to push forward. We're three and three. We started off three and oh, and then lost the last three. And we've got to find a way to stop this bleeding. And they know we got to get back at home here in a few hours and, and get back to work. And that's all they know. And that's all I know. Um, they are frustrated, they're hurt, they're angry, they're sad, all those things. I, they should be, rightfully so, and I am too. Um, but we can't sit there and hang our hats. We've got to find a way 
uh, to get this done. And ultimately it starts with me trying to figure out what's the best things, um, whether it's personnel, game planning, uh, to get us on um, right track. And again, no excuses. Last three games have all come down to really last play type deals, last, last in the game situations. Uh, had we been getting blown out, I would have really had major issues and, and said that I don't know, make major issues, but we're there. We're just not finding ways to finish the game the right way. Hey, and what did you say to the referees on those two obvious defensive pass interference calls? Um, the, some, I had some. Uh, choice words for them, but that's I, I'm not here to discuss officiating. Um, they call what they call. Uh, you know, like I said, the last few weeks we've got reports back apologizing or saying that they made the wrong call on some of the pass interferences. And, and I, I guess if I, my guess would be it would be the same thing. The, the official told me that um, they're allowed to put their hands in a defense player's face mask, but that that is what it is. We should never put ourselves in this situation where it's coming down to the last play. Uh, like that, if we had we executed a little bit better earlier. Ryan, you guys now have a short week coming up, and you mentioned these issues, and you guys need to fix these issues. But how concerned are you now that there there isn't as much time as you guys would like to try to fix these issues before you face a Navy team that is going to run the ball just like Tulsa did? Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. It is a different type of game to prepare for. Um, and with it being a short week. There's not going to be as much, you know, our, our guys are a, a little bit banged up and it's not as much time on the field as much as it is of the mental aspect of it. But when anytime you're facing a triple option team, you also have to rep it, right? You can't just sit there and, and talk about it on film and expect to go out and execute it on Thursday night. Um, given the fact that it is a different type of team to prepare for, um, you know, we have a, a, a set thing that we want to run versus them and some different things that we need to do. Um, but I'll be looking at after I put this uh, game to bed here in a few hours, uh, watching on the flight, and then just roll right into the office and get them to work on Navy. But uh, how do I, you know, the, the things that we can fix, we will. I'm going to constantly talk about ball security uh, until we get it fixed, and it, it's got to be one of those things. It's 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 unacceptable. It's not okay. Um, no excuses for it, but we've got to find a way to own the football, or else. It doesn't matter who we play. On that note, too, Ryan, I mean, to go back to my question specifically, are you concerned that there isn't much time this week to try to maybe fix those things? You're going to have to hope that these guys get it right or, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I can do within this short time frame uh, to be able to fix the ball security issue. We're just going to have to simply come down to um, in my 23-year career, there's no magic formula for owning the football. There's no um, drill that, that's been done. I've I've studied and I'll continue to search to the end of the earth to find ways to who can own the football better, but um, we're just not doing it right now. And, you know, so that's got to come back. And then, yeah, look, we, we've got to put together a great game plan to be able to stop the triple option, right? We know it's going to be a, uh, you know, they're going to try to own the football themselves and try to run the clock. And we know there's going to be limited opportunities as an offense to put points on the board. So we've got to execute every time we can. I, I don't worry about us being able to execute as an offense. It's just we can't shoot ourselves in the foot, and that's kind of been the narrative in our losses. And on that note, Ryan, um, you were on the team three years ago where you guys had a losing streak and were sitting at 500. How do you lean on that to try to keep these guys from not getting down, not getting too hard on themselves because these games have been close, but what can you lean on as a coach from that 2018 team that was sitting at 4-4 four and four and kind of is in that position where it's kind of, you know, where does the season go from here? Yeah, no, you're exactly right, Evan. I was here when we were four and four, and it was very similar feeling in the locker room, right? So what are we going to do? And and the guys are pressing, everybody's pressing to try to find the answers. And I'm going to discuss that with them in our team meeting tomorrow. Um, hey, look, and I and I just got done, you know, literally 10 minutes ago, just tell them, hey, we're three and three. We've got to decide what direction we're going. But I, I told them, if I know this, this Tiger team, that they're going to keep fighting um, because they are a bunch of fighters, they do care. Um, it means the world for them to go out there and do things. You know, every before every game, I talk to them about representing the name on the front of their shirt and the name on the back. And I've told you guys that before. Um, but the, the 74 men that we traveled here with, I know that they're going to continue to fight their tails off to find ways to execute better, to find ways. And again, and plus all the coaches, we're all going to go and say, what can we do? And, and, you know, what I love is we got a guy like Calvin Austin who's playing his absolute tail off at the highest level 
who loves this program, who loves Memphis, who loves his coaches, who loves his brothers. And the first thing he said, well, I got to get better. And those are the type of men, you know, you have in your locker room um, that you've given yourself a darn chance. And so uh, am I frustrated? Absolutely. Am I pissed? Absolutely. Am I angry? Oh, yes. Um, but I, I've got to look at myself in the mirror and say, what can I do to be a better and how can I help put our players in a better position so they can succeed? And like I said, we've got the men that are hurting in this locker room understand the exact same thing. WMC. Hey, Ryan, uh, back to the kicking situation with Kemp. When was he cleared? And uh, what do you kind of attribute those two missed field goals to? And what did you think his range was going into the game? Yeah, he was cleared a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was able to kick, you know, in practice. Um, I, you know, his range. Uh, he's, I've saw him kick, you know, plenty in high school. You know, we thought that at some point, maybe, um, if we went to the 35 going towards a complex that he could make it, you know, we tried the long one, then also the 25, uh, going away from the complex, uh, given the win situation. Um, look, I, I'm not sitting here to, to judge the psyche of a kicker, but it, it, all I know is that he, he's supposed to make kicks and he didn't make them. Um, and that's disappointing. Obviously we'll try Joe Doyle again. We, we've got to get the kicking situation figured out. Um, we're not going to be one of those teams that's going to sit here and go for it all the time, but we, maybe we need to be more aggressive as an offense um, and, and figure those things out. But obviously not happy with where we're at with that. Um, you know, reality, we left, uh, what did we miss? Two or three field goals and uh, missed three field goals and extra points. So um, 10 points, kind of a, a huge factor of the game. Yeah, Ryan, I was gonna gonna ask you about that in terms of, I know you're you're probably still processing this game, but in terms of kicker, I know you went back to Joe Doyle. Do you know um, which kicker you're leaning on going with? I have no idea. I mean, it's right now. I'm obviously not pleased with either of them. Um, and I'm, but look, we've got to find a way. I'm, I'm not a. Uh, we've got to find the answer there, and you know we'll judge it in practice. Um, yeah, obviously, I think we're probably only going to have one on the field practice given the short week. Um, so maybe Tuesday we'll figure it out. You know, I'll rely on our special teams coordinator to tell me what the best answer is there. Thank you. Last one for Brian. Hey, Coach. Uh, I think this is the third game in the road that Sean Dykes has caught every ball that's thrown to him. Um, would you like to see him involved more in the offense going forward? I know the past couple of games he had – his catches all came in the first half. Um, but would you like to see him more involved in the second half? Well, I think that all dictates what the defense is given to you, uh, you know, what coverages are. Um, yeah, I, someone told me that we threw to 10 different receivers uh, this game. And last week, you guys told me that, you know, we weren't throwing to enough receivers. So it's part of it. Look, Sean's an explosive weapon. Uh, obviously, really thrilled that he's part of this offense. And we'll always try to find a way to get involved because he is such a, a dynamic playmaker for us, Brian. Um, yes, yeah, so whether it's him showing up in the second half, obviously he was big on the two point conversion. Um, and we know he'll continue to be a weapon, but you know, as you guys saw, uh, and like I said on the radio, I think in the first drive as an offense and the first drive as a defense. So if you look at really who end up getting starter type reps, um, I, I believe there was over 12 freshmen uh, that were on the field at that time. Again, no excuses. We've got, uh, we played a lot of guys out there. Um, I have great faith in this team, great faith in our leaders that will get this thing right. Thank you, Coach.